149 CVEs total, but only seven of those aren't from Microsoft, which means we have a whole lot to cover. So let's get to it in the patch report. Hello, everyone. I am Dustin Childs, head of threat awareness here at Trend Micro Zero Day Initiative and our chief patch wrangler. It's a huge release from Microsoft. It's a small release from Adobe. There's a whole lot to cover, so let's get straight to it. Only three patches from Adobe today covering seven CVEs in Adobe Premiere Pro, InDesign, and Bridge. And before you ask, yes, I did update Premiere Pro before recording this, so good on me. Apply those patches. Uh, Pretty much they're all at least one critical rated bug. None of these are really outstanding. None are publicly known. I would say if you have to really do prioritization, what are you using most? Adobe Bridge is probably what you're actually gonna be using most because it interacts with so many other Adobe products, but there's not really a lot to go through. All are priority three, none are public, none are under active attack. Instead, let's go ahead and migrate now to the Microsoft patches where we have 139 new CVEs plus four external CVEs. That's 142 we need to cover off in you know the latest and greatest, pretty much everything. Uh, and you'll notice I have a question mark there by Secure Boot. I'll get to that. And yes, even some Xbox bugs in this, which you know make me makes me all look to Twitter. But let's go to the two bugs that are being under active attack first. And the first is this vulnerability in Hyper-V, which could allow elevation of privilege. Now, the interesting thing to me is that Microsoft doesn't say if this could be exploited from a guest OS on Hyper-V or if you have to do it from the host OS. Either way, it's under active attack. I'm a security person, which means I always assume the worst. So I'm thinking that this means that it's from a guest OS that you could elevate to a host OS, which as a ransomware person, holy cow, they're gonna be using this because that really is nice. The next one is this HT, MS HTML spoofing vulnerability, which is very curious because they don't really say what you're spoofing here. Uh, now this is from Haifa Lee, so I'm sure he's gonna blog about it and give us a ton of analysis. Normally, this is the sort of language they use, Microsoft uses when they are talking about NTLM relay attacks, but I don't see how that would occur with MSHTML, so I'm not sure. I think maybe you're spoofing another user uh, somehow or spoofing a different uh, different zone in MSHTML because you know you have different zones there, uh, but it is listed under, under active attack, so especially for these two, deploy, test and deploy them uh, quickly. The next up is uh, we've got three CVSS 9.8s in the remote desktop licensing service. This is not under active attack, but this is a really severe bug. Obviously it's a 9.8, but only on places where you've got the RD licensing service running. So you should not have that exposed to the internet. Check your servers, make sure that they aren't. And if you're not using the service, turn it off. I mean, that's, that's a mitigation right there. Boom, turn it off the service and you're doing good. Uh, this next one is a Codex Library RCE, and I really like this one. Also not under active attack, and it does require authentication, but any authenticated user could update a maliciously crafted TIFF file to an affected server and get code execution, which is pretty neat to me that you're just uploading a TIFF. That's kind of cool. Uh, I don't know if we'll really see this actively exploited in the wild. Uh, crafting malicious TIFFs is a little bit harder than you would think. But it's, it's interesting nonetheless, uh, especially since there are no workarounds for it. And now finally, I wanna to get to the SharePoint remote code execution server. And this is because I disagree with the CVSS rating that Microsoft gives because it says you have to be a site owner. So they list privileges required as high. Well, if you are a user and create a site on a SharePoint server, you are, say it with me, a site owner. So I say that's privileges low. And that's a difference between a 7.2 and an 8.8. So it's one of those things where it's like, if you have to apply patches for eight plus and not sevens immediately, I would treat this like an 8.8. .8. I would treat this as privileges low rather than high. And I would roll that out quickly. We also blogged about this type of thing in the past, all the way back in 2020. So it's, uh, it's kind of interesting. Definitely take a look at it. And here we get to the table and it is a long table. We do have two other bugs that are listed as publicly known. One is ARM and it's uh, an info disclosure and it's not really excited. The other one is a .NET and Visual Studio RCE uh, and it is publicly known, but I don't think it's gonna be actively exploited. Uh, so we'll go on from there. 
and we see the desktop licensing is our critical. We see the uh, Windows codecs and the server uh, SharePoint is critical. But again, I think it should be even more critical. I also want to note that there are a couple of these that require a few extra steps. And I've marked that if you can see here, like the Windows Remote Desktop Licensing Service with that little cross there, that means you need to do extra things other than just applying the patch, which is why if anyone tells you just patch, well, I, I leave your actions up to you, but um, tell them that's not always possible. It is a huge table, so please take your time and go through it. I'm going to spin past it now and get to the other stuff. The other stuff is mainly going to be this one right here. There are a whole bunch of SQL server uh, client sort of uh, bugs here. They're all listed as important. They're all uh, a huge thing. Oh, look, all the secure boot stuff is there too, with a question mark. Um, but really, 38 of these 59 RCEs, which by the way, 59 RCEs is larger than the entire release last month. Getting back to these SQL server bugs, they require a user to connect to a malicious SQL server database. By the way, do you say SQL or do you say SQL? Why don't you uh, leave me a comment and just uh, let me know how I should pronounce it for the audience. Um, but connecting to a, a malicious SQL server doesn't seem like a thing that would really happen. However, I did come up with a scenario where this could happen a lot, where if you have unpatched stuff, someone gets access to your systems, then they can connect back to their own SQL server. This would be a post exploitation sort of thing and either get further exploitation or move laterally. So that's really interesting from that perspective. Otherwise, I don't see that. There's an office bug I do want to call out here too, because it requires multiple patches to fully address the vulnerability. So check out that bulletin and make sure you get all the patches. I did mark it with that little cross on the table. Um, so there's some other fixes, but they're not very exciting. There's one that sounds scary in DHCP server, but it's authentication. And this one, I do agree with them. It is high privileges. So that's kind of goofy. I mean, whatever. Uh, there's a bug. For, there's several bugs for layer two bridge network driver in this. Don't see a whole lot of layer two stuff. So probably not exciting when it comes to that, but you really don't see exploits in layer two anymore. But uh, this one doesn't require authentication. So maybe it's something that somebody can use. Again, this would probably be post exploitation. Uh, and this is this is a fun one. There is a bug in Azure Connect SDK. Yes, that connect that little thing you had on top of your TV with the Xbox there for a while, uh, playing Dance Dance Revolution or, or whatever, you know, you were playing, I, I was dancing. Um, but yeah, that's it. it. And it's available for Windows or Linux. And it's not clear if both got the patch, it just says download the latest SDK. So hopefully that is for Windows and Linux if you are still doing connect development. And, and if you are, I say congratulations. Uh, and Xbox, Xbox wireless controller RCEs. This is crazy. You get RCE in your Xbox wireless controller if you're adjacent. So you have to be able to connect to the Wi-Fi that's in the room, turns game night into something completely different. Uh, if those get exploited, I really don't think they will just because of the attack scenario, but uh, curious nonetheless. We have a whole bunch of elevation of privilege bugs, privilege, uh, local privilege escalation, but uh, most of these just require uh, a, a local user running code that would then execute at system level or as an administrator. Yes, those are different, uh, but pretty straightforward with that. Uh, we also have a couple of sandbox and app container escapes. Those are much more interesting to me because those get used a lot in the wild to obviously get out of the app container. Uh, I'm also interested in the PowerShell bugs because they re they get you further access within PowerShell. And PowerShell is one of those items that attackers use as they live off the land, meaning at post exploitation, they use things that are already on the system to get further exploitation. PowerShell happens to be one of those tools. Uh, I think that one could see some stuff. Uh, we've got a workstation service one, not exactly the, uh, Azure Cycle Cloud could allow an authenticated user to escalate to administrator role. And if you're doing this, you have to update some other uh, stuff. You have to update all of your cloud VMs, Cycle Cloud VMs. If you aren't familiar with that process, Microsoft does provide you some extra guidance. And here's where I get to 
secure boot. Look, there were 23 fixes in April for secure boot, 20 more this month for secure boot. So 43 CVEs within a year for secure boot. I don't think we can call it secure boot anymore. I'm calling it protected boot because it has one job and it's not doing that job. And what's worse is most of the secure boot bugs this month, you can reach over a LAN. Normally secure boot bugs and BitLocker bugs, you have to have physical access to a system. This one you can do over a LAN. So it does make it adjacent, not network, but it's still one of those things that if this gets exploited, it could be really devastating for anyone systems who are using secure boot. Oof. Speaking of BitLocker, we do have a BitLocker bug that does require physical access, but of course it's there to handle physical access and it's not, so not good. That, that's what I'm going with it. It's officially in the not good category. Um, and there is a bypass in the cryptographic services that requires a SHA-1 hash collision. I get it, it's SHA-1, it's not SHA-3, hash collisions do happen, but it's really not that great. The Windows Enroll uh, one as well, you could avoid a certificate validation during enrollment, but that exploitation is gonna be really complicated, so I don't see that happening either. Uh, nine info disclosure bugs in this month, all but two of them just result in random memory coming out, and that's great. Uh, but the two are big, and the first is in D Dynamics 365 on-prem, and it discloses underlying data sets, which includes PII. So if you're running Dynamics 365 uh, on-prem, definitely take a look at that and make sure you get it patched. The other is SharePoint, which is kind of a kind of a kicking boy this uh, for this release, but the SharePoint bug could disclose anything on the website. IDs, tokens, cryptographic nonces, all sorts of info, so definitely take care of that. Quite a few DOS bugs this month as well, but Microsoft provides very little information. And Microsoft, if you're listening, which I know you aren't, please give us a little bit more information about these. Is it a blue screen? Does it just kill the service? Is it an automatic restart? What, what happened? I don't care about the details of the bug. I care about what happens if this gets exploited. Um, so that that's it. We do know that the bug in the iSCSI service uh, is a layer two thing. Uh, and the layer two bridge network driver, those would have to be adjacent. Uh, same goes for the line printer daemon service. Line printer daemon? Holy cow. I didn't know there was still one on there. That's cool. Uh, maybe. And speaking of post-patch, uh, the remote desktop licensing service requires extra steps according to the patch. So read those. Uh, looks like you're going to have to restart all of your stuff and make sure you have the right credentials to, to do that. There's additional information from Microsoft there as well. Uh, just a few spoofing bugs for this month. Uh, the most important of these is going to be an Outlook, and this is documented as an NTLM relay. So that's kind of what makes me think the other one might be along those lines. Fortunately for this Outlook bug, the preview pane is not an attack vector. It does require user interaction. Um, and then there's an NTLM spoofing bug, which obviously is going to be spoofing NTLM creds. Uh, NTLM is going away in the future. So now's the time to start thinking about how you're going to transition out of that into the new stuff from Microsoft. It does list disabling NTLM uh, as a workaround for this, but that's the sort of thing you really need to test before you just turn off NTLM in your environment because there's a lot of stuff that uh, moves through NTLM. Uh, and that th and that takes us through the entire release. Uh, it is a big release, but there's a lot to churn through. Obviously, the critical ones are going to be the ones that are under active attack. So you want to prioritize those first. But there's a lot of extra steps in a lot of these patches. So take your time. You're going to have a busy month. I know July, there's a lot of people on vacation. It stinks, but that's what we signed up for when we decided to do patch wrangling. And that's why I call it wrangling. Uh, I will be at Black Hat and DEF CON Hacker Summer Camp. If you are there, I will be at the Trend Micro booth most of the days, and I will be at the Auto Hacking Village at DEF CON for a while. I'd love to talk patches or bug bounties or anything else you want to chat about, even if you want to stop by and say hello. I like it when people say hello. So with that, our next Patch Tuesday is August 13th after Black Hat, and I will be back then with all the news and information about the patches. Until then, I want everyone to stay safe, have a fun time, and may all your reboots be smooth and clean.